Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the podcast Press Box Access. Here's a clip from my interview with Terrence Moore. Terrence shares his experiences as a young reporter with the old Oakland Raiders, back when Al Davis would tell his outlaw players, just win, baby. There are some maniacal characters, too, and you have met quite a few. I know during your time working in San Francisco, you had a few. I mean, even, you well, let's think about it. You covered the, the Niners, the Raiders, the A's. Yes. And, um, and the Giants. And you had some Raiders. One that comes to mind was John Matuzak, the twos. <laughs> he actually was in the movie Caveman. But you actually witnessed uh, John Matuzak in one of his great moments of ma- maniacal <laughs> behavior. Tell us about that. Well, there were more than a few, but one of the most striking ones was, uh, it was like in the early 80s, and I'm covering them. And uh, that was a wild and crazy team, to say the least. They were very good. But uh, left uh, Lester Hayes, uh, the great cornerback, used to tell me, he says, uh, you know what? He says, we, we work hard and we play hard. Uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> but anyway, we're walking out of the uh, uh, we're walking out of the, the practice facility one day up in uh, in Alameda, and uh, John Matuzak was <clears throat> quote playing around with one of his teammates, and told his teammate that he was going to give him a head start, and I'm right behind the teammate that he's referring to, and I'm thinking, so what does this mean? And uh, the guy was saying, "Stop playing, John. Stop playing." And and so all of a sudden, John pulls out a magnum and points it at a stop sign in the distance and just blows off the top of the head of the stop sign. <laughs> and yes, his teammates started running. And I started running the other way, like, this guy is nuts. So, and yeah. he wasn't the only one on a team carrying a gun. <laughs> no, no, that, that was a wild team. And, then, and they were led by, by Al Davis, you know, who was an interesting character. Al Davis, the Raiders' uh, legendary owner. And I'll tell you, Todd, let, let me tell you my first – meeting with Al Davis as far as face-to-face. When I, when I started covering the Raiders in 1980, again, this is a different time period. Back back during that time, if you were covering a team, you basically lived with the team or, or traveled with the team. And and I'm not sure if that was going on when you became a journalist, but I mean, when I covered the Giants and, and those same Raiders, you actually rode on the same plane with them. You stayed in the same hotel right. with them. And let me yep. tell you. Yeah, I did the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you know, there's stories that we could not write because people would think they would be fiction. All right. <laughs> so that 1980 season, my first year covering the, the Raiders, uh, they trained up in Santa Rosa, California, and Al Davis did something that was unheard of back then. He basically bought out every uh, you know training camp this this uh, entire hotel motel complex. Tropicana uh, Hotel, that's what it was, and just all, and it was just all with Raider staff, and uh, you know everybody staying at the same place, and they had this twenty-four hour restaurant, and Al Davis, and well, let me back up a little bit. The guy who covered the team before me, Frank Cooney, one of my all-time favorite persons, Frank Cooney uh, set me down for sort of like a five-hour session on do's and don'ts while covering the Oakland Raiders, which was considered oh, the toughest team okay. in the National Football League to cover. <laughs> and uh, uh, Cooney to this day, I always always thank him for just getting me prepared for that team. But one of the don'ts was you don't talk to Al Davis. Al Davis talks to you. Oh. Don't even go there. <laughs> so, of course, you went there, right, Terrence? Yeah. Okay. And and Al, at, at this, this restaurant, the 24-hour restaurant, had his own table, which, of course, you know, you don't go to Al Davis's table. And he had a telephone on the on the table. So it's like my first week of training camp. I was a young guy back then, you know, just kind of fresh out of Miami, Ohio, you know, didn't know anything. And uh, and that was back when I used to do these things. I don't I don't do any in the morning. Like, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Hey, let's get a cheeseburger. Well, that sounds makes my stomach <laughs> hurt right now. Just thinking about it. So it's one of those cheeseburger things at what, 23 years old, whatever how age I was. I'm gonna go get a cheeseburger, a 24 hour restaurant. This ought to be fun. So I go to the restaurant. And I look across the way. There's nobody in the restaurant except for Al Davis sitting at his table. And it's like, and at that at that point, I had never introduced myself to Al Davis before. And it's like, oh, this will be a good time to talk to Al Davis. So I'm walking to Al Davis, and he's got his head in his hands, just kind of like looking down at the table, you know. And and uh, and I said, hey, uh, uh, Mr. Davis, uh, I'm Terrence Moore, San Francisco Examiner. He looks up at me. And uh, it's just like Lon Chaney from The Wolfman. <laughs> I mean, hair everywhere. And I didn't realize this. 
But he had this thing that from the beginning of training camp, a little bit before training camp, through training camp, he would not shave. So he's got all this hair on his face, and, and he just and he looks at me like he didn't say a word. It was like if I had a knife, I could cut every part of your body right now. Mm. <laughs> that is when I learned the the intimidation of Al Davis in a hurry. And no, I did not ask a question. I just turned around and got my cheeseburger and left. <laughs>